Okay, so the problem with how they make laser guns in the movies is lasers don't really look like that in real life. When you turn on a laser, you don't actually see any beam shoot out from it, but you just see a line created instantly. That's because the speed of light is so fast that we can't see the start of the beam, we just see it appear instantaneously across the whole room. Even if this were miles and miles long, it would just start and look like a beam that appears instantaneously across all points in space. And so if you had a real laser gun in real life, it should just look like this. Pew, 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 pew. So in order to make a laser gun like they have in Star Wars, we need to use some type of different laser technology. And so that's what I'm going to be employing today, is a laser where you can actually see the beam move through space. Basically what we need to do is slow down light. Okay, now what you're seeing seems impossible. How could you actually see a laser beam moving through the air? You can see this isn't some special effect that I've added in with computers <laughs> afterwards, but it's actually happening right in front of your eyes. You can see a laser beam moving through the air. So what I've done here is actually create a laser beam where I've slowed down the speed of light so you can actually see the pulses of laser moving through space. And what's cool about this setup is I can actually adjust the speed to anything I want. I can even slow them down to just freeze right in front of me. Look at this. I'm lit I'm literally holding a beam of light in my hands. <laughs> and what's really cool about this laser technology is I can actually make a gun out of it and shoot it. And not only that, I can even become stronger than a Jedi and shoot lasers out of my fingers. Look at this. Okay, so once I start shooting lasers out of my fingers, you might be wondering what's going on here. So let me show you how I've done this. In order to do this, first you need to pulse a laser beam. So I have my laser beam here with a fan that I've attached to it where I can adjust the speed of it. But you can see that if I just pulse it like this, so this isn't really giving me what I need. So you can see that as I was saying before, you don't get a laser beam that you can see moving through the air, but you just get an on and off beam. You can see it turn on, on, off, on, off. So you don't get the effect. So in order to make this effect really work, what you need is the rolling shutter effect. Now I showed this in a previous video that when cameras take a picture, they don't just record everything on the screen all at once, but they actually roll from the top to the bottom. So when you film something spinning, let's say the blade of a drone here, you can see that it gets all distorted. Here's a cartoon version of what's actually happening in that shot there. So what we need to do is actually use the rolling shutter effect to not capture the full beam across the whole length of the garage here, but I actually want to capture only a tiny portion of it. So what I do is if I pulse my fan at a certain frequency, and then turn my camera on its side, then the rolling shutter effect will only capture a portion of the laser beam at a time. And depending on how fast I'm spinning my fan, you'll catch different portions of it. So you can make the laser beam smaller or longer. And depending on the gaps in my fan here, I can get the gap in between the lasers to be shorter or longer. Now the idea to turn the camera on its side and use the rolling shutter effect to capture this actually comes from Tom Scott's video. If you don't know his channel, it's an awesome channel. He's an awesome scientist, does a lot of cool videos. And he published a video where they used a pulse laser, turned the camera on its side and showed how you can basically freeze a laser beam in space using this method. Now the way they did this is they used some programming and a special laser that they could pulse on and off and change the frequency of it. But I wanted to figure out a way that I could do this so that other people could replicate this if they wanted to. And a way to do that is just use a fan. 
So what I have here is just a fan where I can vary the voltage. So you don't need any significant programming skills or anything. Basically, you just need a laser and a way to vary voltage so that you can change the speed of the fan here. And, if you, and once you can do that, then you can adjust the speed of the laser beams coming out of it and get it to be any length you want and any speed you want coming out of it. So what you do is by changing the voltage, you're changing the speed of the fan and it changes how much of the laser beam it's capturing due to the rolling shutter effect. And what you can do with this is depending on the speed that you adjust it, you can actually get the laser beams to appear as, they're move, as though they're moving forward, freezing in space, or even moving backwards into it. And that's the way I was able to make it look like the laser beam was coming out of this gun here, or even out of my finger. So I actually made the laser beam reversed, it made it look like it's coming out of my finger instead of coming out of the laser here. So in the end, this is a really cool effect that's actually not that complicated to do. And it's really cool because you can interact with it in real time. You don't need any post-processing on the computer to make a special effect to try to make it look like light because it's actually light that you're interacting with. You can see it bounce off things, bounce off your hand, and it's totally real. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.